Good morning and welcome to the Wednesday morning uh, devotional time here at uh, Faith Presbyterian Church. Um, so sorry about uh, not having anything for you for Monday morning. Um, we, uh, over the weekend, my, my children all came down. Um, well, only one, only one had a stomach bug. Uh, and then by Sunday night, it spread to, or by Sunday afternoon, or one o'clock Sunday afternoon, it spread to all the kids. And so, um, Every child in the house was was uh, was was uh, throwing up, among other things, and uh, by um, by two o'clock Monday morning it hit me, and I didn't really recover from it until um, I don't know Tuesday. When, I don't know all the days blur together. My wife eventually got it, uh, and and uh, this morning we woke up and and I finally felt uh, my wife and I both finally felt well enough to be able to come back to the land of the living. And so I, I, I decided to come to the church and, and try to do uh, one of his devotionals for you. But um, here we are. So uh, uh, please be in prayer for us as, as we continue to try to recover. Um, but it was it was it was a stomach bug and, and it went through all of us. And um, I praise God, I kind of praise God for it because it allowed us to slow down a little bit. And uh, 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 but yeah. So anyway, <laughs> thank you for. Uh, uh, if you knew about it, thank you for praying for us and continue to pray for our recovery. But if you have your Bible, let's go to Revelation chapter 13 and we continue our, our, our uh, devotional series to the book of Revelation. I'm going to keep it very short this morning. Uh, maybe not the 14 or 15 minute videos we've been doing in, in the past or recently, but let's look at Revelation verse uh, chapter 13. And re remember, um, again, repeat, repeat these the same events, same thing being spoken about over and over again throughout these visions, um, recapitulated in a different way in order to emphasize a different point. Um, and so, so far in Revelation 11 and 12, we've been looking at um, the uh, the spiritual warfare behind um, these events, uh, behind the, the, uh, the history of the church and, and behind the return of Jesus. And so uh, here we're looking at the demonic and satanic activity, uh, spiritual warfare behind the um, uh, the history of the church. And so um, we're looking at the, the, the church on the earth, proclaiming the gospel, living out the gospel, uh, making disciples uh, underneath uh, the oppressive persecution of, uh, of satanic activity. And so now we're going to look at uh, the, the sort of the vehicle of, of the sat sat satanic activity. How, how, does, how does Satan oppress uh, God's people? How, how does Satan oppress the church, those who hope and believe in the gospel. Once again, this is not speaking of like specific events. I know there's a lot of like YouTuber prophecy stuff out there where they're like, you know, oh look, you know, um, what's happening in the United States government? This is predicted in the Bible. Well, no, it's it's not. <laughs> um, uh, yes, God is sovereign over what's happening right now, um, but uh, but but what what we're really like looking at in the, in the book of Revelation um, is a uh, is an overview of a timeline is is basically um, what it's going to be like throughout the history of the church until Jesus returns. What does it what does it look like throughout the history of the church until Jesus returns? Um, not at like you know Joe Biden what is winning the presidency or. Or or or, uh, or or the uh, the coup in Myanmar. None of that stuff is is predicted specifically in the Bible. Uh, yeah, the Bible predicts things like that because it says you know there'll be wars and rumors of wars leading up to the return of Jesus. Um, but that that was the same that was the same case back in the 16th century. There were wars and rumors of wars then too, and they thought Jesus was coming back then too. Um, and that should be every, the mindset of every Christian that at any moment Jesus could return. Uh, and and uh, we have to realize uh, what the uh, the atmosphere is going to be like for the church leading up to that point. And so that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing um, the general means through which Satan is going to use in order to attack God's people. Remember, he's 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 he uh, he went he tried to, to 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 kill Jesus when he was born. Remember the woman who gave birth birth to the man, male child, and then after Jesus was born and he and he died on the cross and he rose victorious defeating satan satan was cast down as it were and satan knows he's defeated and so the so he knows the the, the only thing he can do is to go after uh the offspring of jesus remember the, the woman that he chases into the wilderness that's the that that, that is the church that, that is the people of god and so just like satan trying to trip up adam and eve at, at the very beginning of creation now he's coming after those who have been redeemed by the second adam uh 
the redeemed daughters and sons of Adam and Eve, which, which is us, which is you, and, and which is me. And so Satan is chasing after us. He's, he's trying to oppress us. He's trying to destroy the church, even though he himself is defeated. And so in Revelation 13, we, we get this vision of this first beast. Um, and this is the means through which, Jay, through which Satan is going to uh, persecute um, the, the, the people of God. And look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And so let's look at this first beast and, and see who it is. Um, remember uh, verse, verse, uh, verse 17, Satan is standing on the sand of the sea. The sea is a symbol of chaos and turmoil, uh, a place of darkness, a place, a place of, uh, of mystery. Um, and so that's how the ancient mindset worked, and that's how they usually viewed the, the sea. It was, it, was, it was a symbol of those things. And look at chapter 13, verse 1. I saw a beast rising out of the sea, so rising out of chaos, rising out of um, mystery and, and violence and turmoil comes this beast with ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns, and blasphemous names written on its heads. Okay, what is this? Well, this is a, a sign of, of power, a sign of authority, um, a sign of, of royalty, of, of, of ruler, of rulership, really. What kind of ruler is this beast? Look at verse, ten, look at verse 2. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard. Its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. And to it, the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. So, pump the brakes right there for a second. If you know anything about the Bible, the, the this imagery should sound familiar. Um, and maybe maybe you've, you've forgotten and, and, and you've read about it at one point, but remember the book of Daniel. In Daniel, uh, Daniel saw a vision of uh, successive kingdoms. God was telling Daniel, look, this kingdom is going to come, and then this kingdom is going to come, and then this kingdom is going to come, and then I will send my Messiah. Um, one like the Son of Man, this vision that, that Daniel has in the book of Daniel. We hear all these visions, and remember each, each one of these uh, kingdoms that God revealed to Daniel was described one as a leopard, one as a bear, one as a lion, you know. Um, and here what, what we see is that the, these visions uh, all conflated together, all put together. These animals, or these images of these animals put together as if to symbolize that this government, that, that this beast that rises out of the sea is representative of oppressive human governments, oppressive human institutions um, that are ruling on the earth. And Satan is going to work through these oppressive human governments to oppress the church, to subvert the church. Um, and, and we've seen this throughout human history. I mean, we've seen this, you know, the Ro Holy Roman Empire, which was a mixture of, of the church and human government tried to oppress uh, the, the Reformation, tried to subvert the Reformation. Um, even before that, there were others like like uh, like uh, uh, Wycliffe and and and, uh, and and others who tried to uh, stir reform uh, in the church and the government shut them down. They were burned at the stake for trying to translate the Bible from Latin into the vernacular of that time. Um, and so throughout the ages, uh, the there were governments and human institutions that tried to oppress and subvert and persecute the people of God. Um, think about uh, today, you know, I mean, I, I was reading a, a fascinating article um, on the Gospel Coalition web website, uh, and look it up, uh, the Gospel Coalition website. It, 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 the article is called The uh, Fastest Growing Evangelical Movement in the World. It's about the church in Iran. The church, yeah, you heard me right, the church in Iran. I, I believe the Iranian government is the last living theocracy on the face of the earth. Um, where they are led by the Ayatollah, and the the evangelical church in Iran is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, and there, the Iranian government they don't fool around. They they will imprison you, they will kill you, they will torture you if you so much as uh, speak a Bible verse. I mean, they, they 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 you are snuffed out. Or think about the church in China. Think about the church in North Korea. Think about all these. Think about the church in our country right now, where. We could be looking at uh, censoring laws around the corner where we cannot call sin sin anymore because uh, it would be violating somebody's civil right. And so, in other words, the the, uh, the the government or human institutions is the means through which Satan will use um, in order to subvert God's people, to oppress God's people. But our goal is not to succumb to that uh, submer that that subversion. Our goal is not to. Uh, 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 capitulate the gospel or to give up the gospel. Our goal is to continue to, continue to preach and teach 
God's word no matter what. And why should we do that? Well, notice notice some, notice the uh, the vein of God's sovereignty running uh, through this. Look at verse um, verse three. One of one of his heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. It's kind of representative of of, uh, of, of the human institutions, kind of or governments, kind of stumbling along the way, but they will recover um, and still continue to oppress and persecute. Verse four. And they worshiped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast and who can fight against him? Who's the they? Um, oh, and, and, who are the, and, and who's the they that are worshiping the beast and singing the song that goes, Who is like the beast and who can fight against it? it, it well, we, we, we're told who, who the they are in this text. They, they are the ones whose names have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. They are ones who, who, who are not the elect. Um, they're the ones who have been uh, predestined to spend eternity in hell, and 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 their their uh, their unbelieving heart is displayed in how they trust in human governments, and 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 therefore uh, sort of unwittingly uh, buy into uh, the uh, the sovereign authority of Satan as opposed to the sovereign authority of the Lord. And look at verse five. Here's the here's the Here's this kind of vein of human of God's sovereignty in, in the midst of all this, and his, this is the encouraging word to, to us to, to continue to preach the gospel. Verse five, and the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for forty-two months. Now, if you have a pen or pencil, underline that phrase. It was allowed to exercise authority for forty-two months. It's a beautiful phrase. I mean, so far it sounds horrifying. Um, that uh, earthly governments are going to be are, are, going to, are going to have the authority to kill Christians, to slaughter Christians, to persecute persecute Christians, which we see today. Um, and so the persecution we see today around the world on Christians was yes predicted in the Bible, but this is going to be the normal pattern until Jesus returns. I believe the the church will grow in number. The church will continue to evangelize and grow in number. But I believe it's I believe it's going to get worse for the church. Um, uh, in, uh, in, in terms of being persecuted by human institutions and, and governments. But there's hope here because God is allowing it to happen. God is sovereign in and over the persecution of his people on the earth. Um, and notice the phrase 42 months is three and a half years. It's half of seven. In other words, it indicates a, a, a finite amount of time. It's going to be temporary. And when Jesus returns, it will no longer be three and a half years, it will be the number seven, which number seven is, is a number that represents uh, e eternality or, 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 or an infinite amount of time. Um, and so God in his sovereignty will only allow this to happen for such a long, for such a period of time. And, 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 and the odd thing is that is that God is allowing it to happen, this persecution to happen in order for the elect to come to faith in, in, in Jesus Christ. And notice in the book of Acts, really what we're seeing here is we're seeing the pattern of the book of Acts um, uh, displayed over the, the whole timeline of human history. In the book of Acts, the, the more the church was oppressed and persecuted, the more it grew. And here in the book of Revelation, what we're seeing is, is that's, that's basically the pattern throughout human history, that the more the church is persecuted, the more it's going to grow. And so we, we are not to lose heart and dig holes and hide in our holes, but we are to um, get louder with the gospel. We are to be more loving, more gracious, more merciful, more um, hospitable, more welcoming to sinners, uh, more engaging with the culture, more active in society. Uh, like I said in my sermon this past Sunday morning, that, that Christians are to live the gospel in such a way to, to, for it to have a leavening effect. We are to be salt and light in the world so as so, so, so that um, oppressive institutions like slavery would fall away, not through violence and through strength of might, but through the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ, that hearts will change and minds will change as, as a result of the heart change through the sovereign work of the Holy Spirit in the preaching of the gospel so that uh, so that these things will fall away. So the, so the church may be more persecuted over time uh, leading up to the return of Jesus, but people will continue to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are laying down our lives for the sake of the gospel. Verse 6, it opened its mouth to other blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is those who dwell in heaven. Also it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. That's interesting. 
the church will be conquered. But not in the way that that has ultimate finality. But the way, but but from the perspective of the world, oh man, don't join that. Don't join those Christians. They're defeated. They don't have a voice in the world anymore. They their influence is lost, right? But we don't buy into that lie. We buy into the truth that Christ is victorious, and we are victorious through Christ. Um, and so though we we give our lives for the sake of the gospel, we never give up preaching the gospel. Verse seven also was allowed to make war on the saints and conquer them, and authority was given it over tri every tribe and people and language and nation. And all who dwell on earth will worship if everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. All right, it's, been, it's 15 minutes now, and I told you I wouldn't go 15 minutes, but I did. Sorry, I tried to keep it keep it short and brief. Um, but all that to say is is that brother and sister, this day do not do not give up living the gospel in everyday life. In everyday life, being Jesus to your husband and wife, being Jesus to your co-workers, being Jesus to your children, um, living an evangelistic lifestyle in everything that you do and everything that you say. See, if, uh, living a missional evangelistic lifestyle is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week activity. It's, it's, it is a lifestyle. And no matter what happens in, uh, on, the, on the stage of, of world government today, do not ever diminish or look down on um, the the apparent smallness of what you can do for the kingdom and for the sake of the gospel in just relating to others in everyday life. Because what you do, the most powerful thing that anyone can do on the face of the planet is not to uh, destroy the church or, or to, to, to wield power through government institutions, but the most powerful thing that anyone can do on the face of the planet is for a Christian to love his or her children, to love his or her wife, to love his or her friends, to love sinners in such a way that as Christ would have loved them. That is the most powerful thing that you can do on the face of the planet. And to relip, and to uh, share the, the good news of Jesus with, with anyone you come in contact with. That is the most powerful thing. It's the most powerful weapon you have in your arsenal. More powerful than, than legislation passed through Congress. More powerful than, than having a, a, a president sitting in the Oval Office. A Christian president even sitting, sitting in the Oval Office. The most powerful thing on the face of the planet is a spirit-filled, gospel-loving man or woman, uh, child, seeking to live the gospel and all that they do and all that they say let's pray father thank you so much for the good news of your son jesus christ and god i pray that we um live for your son jesus no matter what happens in this world may may we not be discouraged god may we hold fast to you our god our sovereign god who reigns over all things all these things ask your son's precious name of jesus christ amen um okay well at 18 minutes, <laughs> it's the longest, the most of video I've shot, and I said it was going to try to be the shortest one. Man, I'm so sorry, guys. I, I'm going to stop trying to predict time. But anyway, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and, and uh, uh, let me know if you need anything. Hope you're doing well. God bless.